filming a tutorial. This is going to be another DIY. And I was actually very inspired by Philip Lim, his recent spring and summer 2012 collection. I saw so many clutches and I saw a lot of pastels. So I am going to show you how to make a clutch. And basically, I don't know if you can see because it's a little, um, a little bright in here. Basically, it's white faux leather and just a large zipper on the top. That's basically all you need. And also for the color palette, since I didn't find any um, faux leather that was like green and purple, I decided to paint it myself. And all I did was take, um, well actually I'll explain it in the video, but it's very easy. You can choose any color palette that you want. But I do want to add in here that this top section was actually purple before. But, uh, not purple, um, orange. But I was going for more of a, like a pastel rather than an actual orange. So um, I had to paint it all over again in purple since it goes a little bit better with this color palette. So um, yeah, totally love it. Um, check out dulcekenny.com if you wanna see outfit pictures with this clutch. I'm also making another one tonight and that one's going to have just a metallic silver um, line all the way at the bottom and that one resembles a lot to a new clutch by Philip Lim. So, feeling very inspired and I can't wait to show you guys more DIYs. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. It is a little bit more time consuming than my other ones, but it's totally worth it because you can rock something that you actually make from scratch and you can customize it, customize it to whatever color palette that you want or you can even just keep it all white and glossy just like the leather looks by itself. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the tutorial. Bye. So first you want to start off with faux white leather. I actually bought myself one yard of this material so I can make myself multiple clutches in the future. But basically all I'm doing here is taking a clear ruler and a pencil and marking a rectangle of 16 by 17 inches on the opposite side. So next you want to take your sharp fabric scissors and just cut along the guided lines. I actually prefer to use my scissors instead of my rotary cutter because I have more control of where I want to go and it gives me a straighter line. Alright, so what I'm doing here is cutting my 23 inch zipper and you want to leave about half an inch of seam allowance on both sides and then you want to mark it with chalk and then you just want to cut it with scissors other than your fabric shears because if not, you're going to mess up your fabric scissors and you're going to regret it. So use something that you use to cut metal. And then I'm just going to lay it on top like this. And then you want to start by pinning your zipper upside down on the right side of the fabric. Next you want to open up your zipper and start pinning it on the other side and just make sure that the teeth are facing you that way when you close it, it closes correctly. So what I'm doing now is just winding my bobbin with white thread and I'm just getting my machine ready so I can sew everything together. So now you want to use the zipper foot and slowly start sewing the zipper on. Make sure to carefully remove the pins as you go so you don't lose your place. This is very important because you have to make sure you backstitch so the zipper doesn't fall off when you open it. And then you just want to continue on the other side like this. Alright, so this is how it should look once it's closed. Next, what you want to do is sew the side seams. Remember that the seam allowance is half an inch. So once you're done, you want to open up the corners and press down, creating a triangle like this. This is going to give our clutch nice clean corners and structure as well. So the measurements for this are 2 inches on the sides and 3 inches across. It's very important that the sides are exactly the same or your clutch is going to end up looking lopsided. And then you just 
just want to sew along the three inch mark. Uh, just remember that at this point the clutch is still inside out. Alright, so you're basically done. You can flip it to the correct side and just make sure you kind of fix the corner so it's nice and even. Now this step you want to take it very carefully but all I'm doing is sewing the zipper down so it doesn't pop up. The reason you should take it very slow is because you can actually end up sewing the purse into the zipper. Okay, so now we're going to move into the painting. I'm using frog tape to create the design that I want. Um, I actually just want stripes. So I'm just gonna take some and make sure you press it down really good so the paint doesn't bleed. Next, I'm just going to add some paint onto a disposable plate. And then you just want to start painting it, but this orange is actually going to be covered up by purple because I didn't really like the way the orange came out. So, of course, I'm painting it orange right now, but it's going to be covered up anyway later. And that's the beauty of this paint is that it actually lets you experiment and have a lot of fun because no matter how dark the previous color was, you can always go back and paint it even like a lavender like I did here. And I actually removed the uh, painter's tape and then I'm painting it green, which is the last color, and just going very carefully on the edges. Um, and yeah, it's actually very easy. Okay, and here is the finished product. Don't forget that you can go to dulcecandy.com if you want to see more pictures of it and the complete outfit of the day.